When you make this recipe for State Fair Lemonade, you'll never want to drink any other lemonade again. Because not only are we going to be using lots of fresh lemon juice for this one, we're also going to be using the peels in a really cool process that pulls every bit of flavor out of the lemon. Now I'm not going to lie to you, this is not my original recipe. This one comes from Chef John from Food Wishes. And while normally I only like doing my own recipes for my channel, this one was so good I just had to share it. So without further delay, let's make State Fair Lemonade. But before we begin, if you like my videos, let me know you did so by clicking like and please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. That way you'll never miss a video. And it's free, so why not? We're going to begin by washing six large ripe lemons. For something like State Fair Lemonade, please go for the best quality lemons you can afford. I'm using fairly hot water here and a lot of friction. You want to get those lemons as clean as possible. Now we have to remove the skins off these lemons, and the best tool for that would be a vegetable peeler. But not my vegetable peeler. While this thing is great for peeling potatoes and carrots, whoever designed it did not have State Fair Lemonade in mind. I used to have a great vegetable peeler, but then one day a spoon got stuck in it and I had to break the blade to release the spoon. I don't know if that's happened to you before, but it's pretty annoying. And the thing that concerned me here is you're only supposed to peel off the yellow part of the skin. The white pith can make the lemonade bitter. As you can see here, I'm not having the best time achieving that with this peeler. I wonder if this lemonade is going to end up tasting bitter. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll let you know. Once all your lemons are peeled, and hopefully it's mostly just the yellow part, you add in one and a quarter cups of sugar. If you like a more tart lemonade, you could probably get away with one cup, but as somebody who doesn't like things too sweet, I thought this was just the right amount. By the way, those little black bits are just coffee. We're going to mix this together until the peels are really well coated with the sugar. If you've ever sprinkled sugar over strawberries and let them sit for about 10 minutes, you might notice that they release a lot of juice. The same thing is going to happen here, only the sugar is going to release all the oils from the peels, and that's going to take anywhere from 2 to 12 hours. So I'm going to wrap this up and let it sit for the maximum amount of time, 12 hours. And here we are the next morning, and you'll notice it's going to look totally different. This kind of reminds me of marmalade. All that oil has seeped out of the peels, and the sugar is pretty much liquefied. Pretty amazing stuff when you think about it. I'm going to bring two cups of water to a simmer and add in the peels. This is going to release all that gunky, flavorful oil into the water. We're going to simmer this for five minutes, and your kitchen is already going to smell amazing. By the way, if you want to see Chef John's version of this recipe on Food Wishes, which I highly recommend you do, I've linked it in the description below. In case you're tempted to let this simmer for longer than five minutes, I would advise against that, because sometimes over-simmering can make peels bitter. So after five minutes, I'm going to take this off the stove and now stir in three cups of cool water. And because my saucepan isn't quite big enough, I'm going to transfer all of this back into the bowl. And if you're a regular viewer of my videos, you probably know by now that this is not the first time this has happened to me. I might be half decent at cooking and maybe painting pictures, but estimating sizes of vessels? Not my forte. I wonder if this bowl is going to be big enough to hold all the lemon juice we're about to squeeze into this. By rolling your lemons in your palm like this, you usually get more juice out of them. And now I'm just going to do this the old-fashioned way with a good old fork, but if you have a fancy reamer, by all means, please use it. And don't worry about any seeds or pulp getting in there, because of course we are going to be straining this. It is important to note that you don't want to add in this lemon juice if your mixture is still hot. Anytime you add lemon juice to a hot liquid, it has a tendency to kill the brightness of the flavor, so make sure it's almost cooled completely before doing this. And look at that. That bowl is barely big enough to hold everything. It is at this moment here that I'm very thankful that they invented measuring cups with spouts on them. So I'm going to strain this mixture into this pitcher that's going to make it very easy to transfer into a bottle. Basically our State Fair Lemonade is finished, but this is still a tiny bit lukewarm. You wouldn't want to try and serve this now, even if you were to pour it over ice. So in the meantime, let's get ourselves a nice glass bottle or a pitcher, and we're going to pour our lemonade into here. And if you ask me, if you serve a drink like this from a nice bottle, it somehow seems to taste better. So go ahead and pour this into whatever pretty bottle you plan to serve this in, and we're going to chill it before we actually pour it on ice. My favorite thing about this bottle is not all of this fit in there, so I didn't have to serve all of it to my guests. But you're not going to tell them, are you? So now we're going to chill this for about 3-4 to four hours, and we're going to serve this the Chef John way, chilled over ice. 
And remember how concerned I was about this tasting bitter because I was struggling so much with my pathetic excuse for a vegetable peeler? I'm happy to report that this lemonade wasn't the least bit bitter at all. So if you struggle like I did, don't even worry about it. It's probably gonna be totally delicious. But don't take my word for it. Go try it yourself.